Hi, my name is Wes Fry. I'm from Tennis Warehouse Australia. Today I'm going to compare the difference between the Spinfire Pro 2 ball machine and the Lobster Elite 3 ball machine. Lobster has a very large range. It's, uh, it starts from the Lobster Elite Freedom up to the Lobster Elite 5 Grand Slam LE. Uh, but the Lobster Elite 3 is the most comparable to the Spinfire Pro 2. So for that reason, these are the two that we're going to compare today. Lobster's been around a very long time. Uh, very well-known brand, um, very reliable, very dependable. Spinfire is a newer um, player on the market, so it's good to get an understanding of what the new competition is able to offer. To start with, I'll turn both machines on. So when you first turn on the lobster, it'll give you about 10 to 15 seconds before it starts to fire balls out so that you can get to the other end of the court. Okay, so just turn the lobster on, now turn the spin fire on. Both machines just take a little bit of time to fire up. Now, both machines um, have similar features. They can shoot the ball at approximately 130 kilometers an hour, which is 80 miles per hour. Uh, the spin fire holds 200 balls, lobster holds 150 balls. Um, you'll notice the lobster is a little bit smaller, thinner, a bit more compact than the Spinfire. So if you've got a very small boot car, it's very handy. A um, little bit bigger here, so that allows it to hold more balls. It also is necessary because this offers internal oscillation as opposed to external oscillation. So what I mean by that is, if you watch this, I'll turn the oscillation on on this one. You can see that the Spinfire oscillates from side to side internally. Uh, it's very fast, it's very quiet, and most importantly, it's very disguised. You can't actually be down the other end of the court and, and sort of follow the machine along and work out where it's going to shoot to um, because it's, it's too hard to see from the other end of the court. Lobster, you can see the way it moves from side to side, is um, a little less subtle. It's a little slower, um, still still good oscillation, it'll move from both widths of the service line, um, but that's, that's the main reason why this is a skinny machine and this is a little bit larger, is just so it can accommodate that internal oscillation. Now one thing you'll also notice, I'll, I'll just show you, when I turn this off, it turns off wherever it just happens to turn off. Conversely, if you have a look at this one, when I turn off the horizontal oscillation, You'll hear it beep, so you know that it's registered. But it didn't stop until it got back to the very centre of the machine, which is great, um, you know, because you can you can position it anywhere you want. So I can shoot some balls out that side if I want, or I can go to the other side. But it's nice when you turn it off that it comes back to the middle. Conversely, this one has gone out to the left-hand side. It'll just turn off wherever I happen to turn it off. That means next time you come out onto the court and you position it in the centre and you're ready to go and you're going to shoot straight down the middle and you turn your horizontal oscillation on, what you find is it goes out to the side and then back to the middle. So you'll be hitting it into the fence. So in order to be able to operate this properly, you've got to remember to stop it in the middle. And Lobster have done a good job by providing these plastic feet here so you can get a gauge as to where the middle is. and you make sure that you stop it when you've got even amount of space on both sides. So a little bit more manual, but you can get around that. Uh, the next thing we'll show you is the vertical oscillation. So you'll see with the spin fire, it's oscillating up and down. So vertical oscillation will vary the depth of the ball in the court. On general settings, it's gonna work about from the service line to the baseline. If I turn the lobster on, you'll see the same sort of thing happening. Um, it's, it's very slow. So right now, while it's at its highest point, you're going to get deep balls. And then when it gets down to the lowest point, you're going to get short balls. Now again, same thing with this. If I turn this off, technically I really should wait until it gets right down to the bottom to stop it. That way I know that whenever I turn this feature on, it's always going to go higher than the net. And that's important. Whereas if I turn this one off, 
it always returns back to the lowest point, so you don't even have to think. Um, then you've got features like the two-line drill. It's quite a difficult one to explain, but you can have the setting. I'll turn this one on, two-line drill. Okay, so what it's done now is it started out with a forehand, and it won't actually go to the backhand side until a ball has gone out. So if I press it again, you get a narrow version of the same drill. So it's hard to see that without firing balls through it, but ultimately you'll get a forehand, then a backhand. Forehand, backhand, and if you want it in the narrow setting, then it's forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, but you don't have to move very far, just a little step side to side. The wide setting is quite difficult. You'll be running and getting tired very quickly. Uh, Lobster has exactly the same feature on that one, but of course the whole machine is oscillating from side to side, as opposed to just the internal mechanics. What I want to show you now is the remote control for each machine. Spinfire's remote control has nine buttons on it. Um, so it can control the elevation up and down, vertical oscillation, start and stop the machine, the two-line drill, wide and narrow, um, your horizontal oscillation, uh, left, right, and also a pause button. And the pause button is very handy because you can pause the machine while you pick up balls and just conserve battery life. The other good thing about this remote is that when you actually press a button, you can hear the machine beep so that you know that it's uh, you know, activated. So I press horizontal and we'll see the machine start to oscillate from side to side. And as I said before, you press it again, you can hear it beep, but it won't stop until it gets back to the middle. Lobster has a optional remote as well. Um, it's a smaller remote, so that's very handy. It'll fit into your pocket very nice and easy. The problem with it though is it only has two buttons, so you can start and stop the balls firing out, and you can also turn the horizontal oscillation on and off. So it's really, to help you get to the other end of the court. Even though it does have a delay, it'll allow you to get to the other court and play when you're ready. Or if you've got an important phone call or if perhaps your child walks onto the court, you can press pause very quickly with this remote. The other thing that the machines do is that they will uh, put the elevation up nice and high. Both machines do a great job of this and allow you to do smashing practice. And you can either set it with some slice so you'll get nice high ones or you can hit some top spin, which is more of a lob that you have to try to you know, prevent going over your head. So now I'd like to show you the back of the machines. Um, portability is an important factor for a lot of people. You need to be able to transport it over you know, some difficult terrain at times, and that's where Lobster really uh, excels. They have some very large wheels and a nice big handle, very easy to utilize. You can see it rolls, it's very smooth. So. If you do have some difficult paths to get over, I would recommend the Lobster. Um, Spinfire has a, a very easy way to utilize. So I'll just turn this around so we can see. We have a handle under here, suitcase style handle. And you can see that it moves reasonably easy as well. As well. Both machines, you can collapse the hopper got a nice tight fit there. Put that down. We can take the carousel off just to get it a little bit lower if you need to fit it into a boot. And the same with Lobster. Lobster can take its hopper off like that. Collapse over and we can drop the handle down. It's a little bit of a trick to that. And it gets it nice and low for a, for a boot or if you need to store it away in the garage just to try to conserve space. If you have a look at the Lobster control panel, you'll see that it has dials and switches. So for example, the speed can go from zero up to 80 miles per hour, which is 130 kilometers an hour. Dials are, you know, they're very manual. So if you want to get to say 65 kilometers an hour, it's very difficult to get it exact, but it, you can get it close enough. You've got um, your vertical oscillation on off, horizontal on off, two line drill narrow or wide. And if you do get the remote control, you need to switch it on here before it will activate. And of course, you've got your power button there. Um, you've got two charger ports. There's different chargers that come with the machine. The standard charger here or your fast charger can run off the port on the side. Okay, with the Spinfire control panel, 
you can see that it uses a membrane touch panel, very nice buttons. Um, so you press a button, you hear that it reacts, and you can hear the machine's doing what it's meant to be doing. And when you turn it off, it'll come back to the middle, as we said. You've got a nice LCD display here, which has a four bar battery indicator, just like a mobile phone. Very handy to know how much time you've got left. If you want to change settings, uh, for example, the ball speed will go from 1 to 20, so unlike the Lobster, it doesn't have a, a feel for what the actual speed is. You just know that 20 is the maximum and 1 is the lowest, so you can change your speed. But the good thing about this is that if you want to come back to an exact setting, you can easily set it back to 6 if that's what you like, or perhaps you like 13. It's very easy to come back to the exact setting again. Both machines do top spin and slice. To alter the top spin on the spin fire, you can simply go into positive figures here and it goes to plus 10. Or if you want to go into slice, you would move it down to minus, into the minus area. In order to adjust the elevation, you simply press up or down, and that's how you would set the nice sky high, high lobs. One thing I do like about this machine is the level of top spin and slice is outstanding. Uh, when you have them on the maximum settings of 10, um, it's just too hard to play. It's really quite ridiculous how heavy the top spin and slice is. So I would encourage you to sort of set it somewhere around 3 or 4 for the top spin or slice. So in summary, these are our two most popular machines. Um, they're both fantastic and I'm sure that you'll be happy with either, either one that you choose. If you have a requirement for portability, you've got some difficult terrain to get over, or you have a small car boot, then I would recommend the Lobster. Um, for the features, I think that the Spinfire makes a really good option because it has the internal oscillation for disguised delivery. You've got your LCD touch panel. You can set your settings exactly how you like them. You've got the nine function remote control, um, a large ball capacity of 200 balls. So for feature for feature, I think that that's a very good option. So. To summarise again, uh, for portability, we choose the Lobster. For features, we would choose the Spinfire.